So the song says that mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe, because yes, we can see it, that wonders are still what you do. I love this when y'all, it says, and bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. That wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Say, we are here. Set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. Cause we need a move. We need a move. Can you shout that out? We need a move. We need a Good morning, Lee 
morning, church. There is a spirit that is in this room this morning that is just so, so sweet. So stand up, worship with us this morning. Don't be afraid to raise your hands and just give it all to God. We're so glad that you're here.
step out of the grave Break into the wild And don't be afraid Run into wide open spaces Grace is waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom There is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom There is freedom Come out of the dark Just as you are Into the fullness of His love For the Spirit is here Let there be freedom your scars come back to communion come back to the stars run into wild places dance like the way has been lifted grace is waiting where the spirit of the Lord is there 
Hallelujah. Listen, guys, before we get into this next worship song, you guys can remain on your seat. I want to be a man of my word and pray for the top five names that we put on the piece of paper on last week. And so if you didn't get one of these, just raise up your hand and one of the uh, ushers, greeters will get one of these to you. And so Easter Sunday is like the Super Bowl Sunday of our faith. And so we want five names or as many names as you can put on this thing of individuals that are unchurched. We don't want church folk. Well, we do want church folk, but we want to invite unchurched folks because what happens is that we'll get a bunch of people in here from other churches and then they'll just go back to their church. And so just lift up your hand, anyone who has not filled one of these out, and they'll get it to you. And so can you just stretch your hand towards heaven? Can you do that with me? And we could come into agreement right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, all of the names that were listed on last week and those names that will be listed on this week, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will begin to minister to their hearts. God, that when they begin to receive an invitation to come to the Easter service, Resurrection Sunday, God, that it would be seamless, my God. Lord, that, that you would have already done the work and the individual that does the, in the invitation would just put the nail in the coffin, Father. We just pray over these folks right now, God, that there would be no need in their life, my God. We pray for healing over their minds and their bodies, Father God. We pray in the name of Jesus that whatever they're going through, God, that you would present yourself to them in a dream, in a vision, Father God. That they would seek after you, God. We, our flesh that doesn't desire to follow you, but but our spirit is willing. And so, God, as you pluck the strings of their heart and knock on their on the door of their hearts, my God, will they open knowing, my God, that without you, we cannot. Father, we are a world, a world that's in need of a Savior. So, God, as we lift these names up here, God, be working on their hearts there. And we will give you all of the glory and all of the praise in the name of Jesus. And everyone shouts. Let's worship God. Lift up your hands. God, cross over us. Wave after wave.
you did this week, no matter what you did this month, this year, your whole life, God forgives you. God forgives you. He's saying, come back to me, my little one. Oh, he wants to be Father God. He wants to be Father God in this moment. You are not too grown for your father. God said, don't think you're too grown. You are still my child. Great. 
doesn't like to talk about demons so we feel like we can't but if the world can talk about crystals and astrology and all these things then surely we can call out these things in this moment I want you to start calling out your struggles and casting them down in the name of Jesus I cast down the spirit of anxiety in the name of Jesus. I cast down the spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. I cast down the spirit of anger in the name of Jesus. I cast down not trusting you enough, God, in the name of Jesus. I cast down the spirit of control in the name of Jesus.
trying to withhold you back in this life, anything trying to keep you stagnant and confused, I cast it down and bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. Laziness, I cast you up and bind you down in the name of Jesus. to work on your mind. We want to know you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray over everyone's mind pray that your soul comes into alignment with the spirit of God, that you walk out of this place whole, that every broken piece of your soul be restored back to you right now in the name of Jesus, that every lie the enemy whispers in your ear at night or throughout the day or at work, and you're crying in the bathroom or you're crying in your car on your lunch break, I pray right now that all that condemnation leaves you in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. I cast down grief from the mind and bind it up in the name of Jesus. 
brokenness bowed down to the feet of Jesus. Mental illness bowed down in the name of Jesus. Depression bowed down in the name of Jesus. Satan, you no longer have the right to remind us of the past in the name of Jesus. Satan, you no longer have the right to remind us of the things that we conquered already in the name of Jesus. Trauma, bow down to the feet of Jesus. Did y'all come here to be set free today? Because I, I get tired of karaoke and just singing the favorite Maverick City songs. I get tired of it. This generation is, we're so just, don't, don't talk about demons, don't talk about demons. Do you see what the kids of this, this day and age are doing? The crystals that they're worshiping, the idols that they're building, they're, they're worshiping these demons that we're not talking about. So we proclaim freedom. Lay it all down at the altar. Lay it all down. God, we want more of you. I surrender. I surrender. Let's lift up the name of Jesus, declaring his freedom over the things that we now let go. Seal it, seal it. I surrender. Look at that, my piano just turned off.
Who you with? Who you with? And it's just good. And here's the thing. God inhabits the one searching for him. And today we stand and sit and worship together trying to figure out how Jesus Christ fits in our lives as a relationship, not religionship. And a lot of times we see people yelling and screaming and speaking in tongues, but the more we learn and actually get in the Word, we start to understand that. So my name is Pastor Bill, and I just enjoy Jesus Christ, and I got the JC fever. How about y'all? So who you with? Hey, and if you're online, you better be rocking that house, waking them up, because God is alive. Yes, come on. And that's why the Link Church is such a wonderful place, not just because I'm here, but we actually care about each other. We actually want to support each other, learn together, and do life together. So welcome someone you haven't met before. Welcome someone you haven't met before. We're going to keep rocking this thing out. Keep rocking this thing out. Say hi to somebody you haven't seen before. And welcome them to the Link Church. If you're online, I'm giving you the high five wave. And Jesus loves you too. Come on. doing well today? Listen, ah, let's just, let's just keep that atmosphere. I don't, I don't want to lose this. I don't, I don't want to lose this. There's something special that's happening in here. And a lot of times we get so programmatic and so systematic and then the next is announcements and the next is a silent offering and the next is a sermon and all of that stuff. And it's all good. Listen, worship is the only part of service I say it every week that is for God. The rest is for you. God don't need announcements. God don't need a message. He's the one that provides it all. But there's something just so amazing about God. Because we think that, that God is only what happens on this, on right up here with folks being slain in the spirit, speaking in tongues. We know when a tornado is in town by the trees swaying, particle in the air, we know that the winds are blowing. But we also know on this hot summer day, when we grab the grass, a handful of grass, we just let it go. And you see it just kind of fall to the side. That's an indication that the wind is still blowing. See, some people need this radical up here like, some people need that. Some people worship radically, not because they're crazy, but because God did something amazing in their life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I will tell you this, that the measure of some folks' praise is the measure of what God has done in their life. And, and that's not shaming anybody, but like, well, I'm not even two-stepping during worship. It's all good. When you recognize, see, some of us have not even recognized what God has done for you. And so I pray for the one that was not at this altar and experiencing all of the charismatic stuff that happens up here. But just right at your seat, that you barely made it into this place because literally you went through hell to get here. But I want to let y'all in on a little secret and exhort you in this that some of you the devil gave you his best shot and you still stand it. one thing that I love about what's happening in this time and I could say the link church but I'm not going to be biased even though I think we got the best church in the world right come on y'all I'm going to be biased right because it's the church that God has given us to steward right but there's something special that is happening globally. People are hungry for God. 
not a wishy-washy, not, not just something superficial, not something that we could just come to church, check the block off and go home. But there are, there are people that are stepping into a place of worshiping in spirit and in truth. And, and we, don't have to, we don't have to understand the theology, the theology of it, but we know that when we get into the presence of God, something begins to happen. There's something on the inside of us that begins to get stirred up. There's something that begins to break in our life. The mindsets begin to shift a little bit. And it goes from just a band and worshipers up here just singing to a dynamic worship experience and God begins to work in a divine way and it's a divine appointment. My, my brother and sisters here came through Google. They were, it was a divine setup. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for using Google to get them in the house. Listen, other people have come because they want to watch somebody get baptized. Others have come because they want to watch their kids get dedicated. Some of y'all just went by. Some of y'all haven't been here in a while and it's all good. Can I let y'all in on a little secret? Secret. You're not here by accident and you're not here because you're seeking because our flesh does not seek God. Our flesh is an enemy of God, but God begins to pluck on the inside of us and there's something that causes us to seek for, for a thing that we don't know what, but when we get in the room, let me let y'all in on a little, on little thing and people in corporate America understand this more than we do in the church house. Presence is power. presence is it's when you show up and I don't want to get into my message but but maybe just a little bit you provoke the power of God you don't do nothing God don't do nothing you don't move I'm not talking about in the literal sense You don't provoke him you're going to continue the same cyclic cycle and pattern of your life wondering why you keep meeting the deadbeats you keep meeting and why you keep coming into relationship with the same people that you keep coming in relationship with and you keep going and being around the same folks and going around the same financial issues and find yourself in front of the same computer looking at the same pornography and over and over and over you become cyclic why because you haven't pro you haven't provoked the one who can and here's the truth we're reborn in Jesus it's not by our physical age because I'm 53 and my beautiful granddaughter here who we're blessed to be able to come today is four but she loves Jesus too and here's the truth she even asked me today in that pew there Paul Paul what's going on and I said Jesus is here and she's very excited just like we should be excited at 53 now here's the truth we have been taught all kind of lies but as men and women we can open up our heart to Jesus Christ to get the JC fever. And it's okay to act radical for Jesus. Come on. Because the world will put us in a grave and not even blink twice. Come on. Who you with? Jesus. So I want you guys to just do this for a moment. People wonder always why you, go to, you, you cry in church. Why do you cry in church? You cry in church. It's not because you're sad. It's because what your body cannot properly act in the way that the spirit is manifested. And so your body's got to do something. So we cry. You ever wonder? You're not sad. So folks looking around, I'm standing up here on purpose because there's some people that just don't know. And they come to this and then they leave and they were like, that was a little much. But I want to let y'all in on this truth. Acts chapter 2. They were in the upper room. Jesus had already gone home. All of a sudden, there was something that broke out in the room. And it was tongues like fire that spread amongst every individual. And on the outside, the folks thought that they were drunk on the inside. But there was something that was going on on the inside that caused the people on the outside to wonder what was happening. Folks are not wondering what's happening in the church anymore. Why? Because it's become stale. The church in America is not dying. It's failing. You know how we're going to get people in these doors? Your radical worship and your radical praise. 
And so can we just lift our hands towards heaven really quick, just all of us. God, I just pray in the name of Jesus. We did a lot of casting out and we did a lot of praying for deliverance. And, and But the word tells us this, that those unclean spirits go to a dry place, but they do come back to see if that space is filled. And if it's not filled, then it brings seven worse ones. And so I pray right now in the name of Jesus that every empty space would be filled with your Holy Spirit right now. And that you would send down a legion of angels to guard every door, to guard every post. We pray an anointing over every single individual. We send you, Satan, to the feet of Jesus. Any transference of spirit, anything that is trying to jump from one person to another, trying to be sneaky. Listen, we expose your plan right now in the name of Jesus and we give you your eviction notice and we declare freedom in the house today. If you believe that give Jesus a hand clap of praise all over this place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Get you, She turns four today? Oh, I thought she had a birthday. She's my beautiful little uh, granddaughter Aria. Amen. So I'll let you finish doing your welcome. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm Bill. Hey, here we are having fun and here's the truth. All of you matter. All of you matter. Now, sometimes we don't believe that. But I'm here to tell you that if God can love me, how bad I was, and how I'm trying to get better. And the reality is, we just work at getting better together. Men are taught to be alone. I was taught to be tough, keep it inside, suck it up, buttercup, all that tough stuff. But we have feelings too, and I think that's how family was trying to make us the man of the house, but somewhere it got skewed and we left Jesus out of the equation. And we as men are not taught to cry. We don't even know what that looks like sometimes. It's like so different that we push it down, but we need him too. And we need accountability and we need actually people who care about us, just like the ladies. And all you ladies in here, you matter and you're ladies with a capital L, not what the world has labeled you. Men, you are men with a capital M. Accept the Lord, you're a prince and princess, heir to the kingdom of heaven. And in the word, because one thing I want to share, you got to get in the word, whether it's audible, whether it's the hard copy, whether it's a little bit of both, however you get it. That way you can understand what God's trying to talk to you. It's great that we're up here with the mic, but God wants an intimate relationship with you. And then us together corporately so we can go help people. So know that you matter. The prayer cards, if you were new and had some filled out, just bring them up here. Someone already gave me one. And we're going to pray over those too because they don't, that's where it starts in prayer. Somebody prayed for Bill a long time ago and it was my mama who's gone now. But she impressed upon me goodness and how to serve and help people. So know that you matter. There's all kind of stuff going on. And we're just going to continue in the word and learn about, and uh, this is where I have fun. So learn about how our relationship is with everything that we do. So I want to introduce you. I want to introduce you to oh my Lord. Uh, Link Church Pastor Guillermo <laughs> Rivera. I want to let y'all know that I'm not eating that up and that's not going to my head. I actually don't like it, but, oh gosh. God is good, y'all. Listen. Um, you know, tithe and offering. Uh, this is this is a part where we get to honor God with our resources. Uh, I love some of the things that are going on. They're, they're going to mention in announcements. Um, but we're going to go to Mexico uh, the first week of June. We, we do a lot of community stuff. We're involved. And uh, we want to be relevant. My heart and my desire is if we close down today, would the community miss us? And if they wouldn't, then why, do, why are we keeping on keeping on? And so I, I challenge you in that there's only one area of the Bible where God says, test me in this. And so where's your heart in regards to the area of giving? And it's a revelation. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. Every week I get up here and I talk about tithing and offering. The reality is some of y'all just be like, turn me off and that's done. I, I need the word. And uh, But here's the deal. I didn't give and come into a relationship in the area of my resources until God gave me a revelation. And I realized, like, man, I've been cheating myself. And so uh, I challenge you in this. Ask God to give you revelation. Don't take it from me. There are many people that can share how they benefit and how faithful God is in regards to the area of giving. Ask God to give you revelation in the area of your finances. 
and I guarantee that he will speak to your heart. And it's always difficult the first time. The first time that my wife and I gave a, a, a gift, a big gift, uh, it was $1,000 that we gave the first time that we gave like that. And, uh, and it hurt. We were like, Jesus, are you sure? <laughs> Is that real? Yeah, come on. We're not going to play. We're not going we're not going to play and act like nah. It hurt. But God was faithful and we were in Germany at the time and can you believe that out of that somebody donated a BMW to my wife and I. This is a true story. Now BMWs and and uh BMWs in in Germany are nothing. They make them there. But it was big to us. I came from America and I had a BMW, y'all. <laughs> And so, and so ask God for the revelation in regards to the giving. There's so many ways that you could give. You could text to give, uh, 45777. Just type linked give to that number. You can give that way. It will send you a link. Uh, then there on after, you just type linked and a dollar amount to that number. It's easy. You could go to the linkedchurch.org and give online. Uh, we have some awesome ushers and greeters that are going to pass these buckets around. Uh, we have mailboxes if you want to do it in secrecy and don't want anybody to see your giving. It's all good. Uh, we want to be able to honor it all. Amen? And so I know that it's a sacrifice. And I will tell you this. I, I didn't, I didn't pre-plan uh, sharing this, but um, my conviction in regards to God's money, I don't play with. I realize that there are single parents in here that give of their last. And this is the honest to God truth. When we hand out flyers and I see people don't leave them around, I will approach you and I will, I will have a conversation. Or we see flyers in your car. Why? That's God's money. Somebody gave up their last believing that they were giving to a ministry that was going to be good stewards. And so that's my conviction and that's my heart in regards to the area of finances. Will it be the same for you? God, we just love you and we thank you for the tithe, the offering, the seeds that will flow into this place, Father God. May we continue to always be good stewards of it, that we would be transparent, God, and that we would do what you have demanded and have uh, called us to do in the area of finances. God, may many lives be impacted because of our obedience. We love you, God. You are awesome. Blessed, as I know you will, in the name of Jesus. And everyone says, amen. Find a place to give. Amen. Good afternoon. My name is Tisha, and I'm here to do the announcements. Um, welcome to the Link Church, where we link people to Christ to see them set free, healed, and empowered. Amen. If you are a first-time or a second-time guest, if you could please raise your hand, we would just like to acknowledge you. We would not embarrass you, I promise. Give it up for our first-time and second-time guests. Woo! Look at that! I, I just need y'all in the front. I need y'all in the front to turn around to the back. I need y'all in the front to turn around to the back. Look at that. That whole back place right there. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Praise God. Um, we will, if you have not already received a new uh, guest card, we will give you a new guest card. You just meet us right back where Miss Rosie is standing, and they will have a gift for you. Give it up for our first time and second time guests again. If you are online and you are a first time or second time guest, please let us know. If you would like to follow along with Pastor G's message for today, we have a QRC code. Take out your phones and um, pull out your picture or picture your camera and take a picture. All right, every Tuesday we have In the Word, it is via Zoom. So um, what we do is uh, Pastor G gives his sermon here on Sundays, and then on Tuesdays he goes deeper into the Word. So if you feel like, oh, I just got a little taste on Sunday, you want to get a little more, meet us on Zoom at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. We have our youth nights on Tuesdays as well, and that is at 6.30 right here in the building. Um, we have on, oh well, on March 5th. We passed that. We almost in April. Um, so <laughs> this year is flying, man. So um, every Sunday between 10 and 10.30, we are having our discovery classes. That is going to be a class where you discover more about yourself. You discover more about the church, and you're discovering more about Christ. Um, we have our outreach mission trip yard sale on April the 1st at 8 a.m. We will be having, um, or we are asking for donations for the uh, kids. You know, we do Easter egg hunt. 
on Easter. Listen, my phone won't scroll, y'all. Um, I'm going to try to remember all this. Okay, so um, <laughs> we are asking for donations for candy to fill the Easter eggs for the kids on Easter Sunday. And we have 600 eggs that we have to fill. We will be filling them on April the 4th, so maybe you can't donate with cash or with candy, but you can donate your time. That is, again, April 4th at 6 p.m. P3, power or prayer praise and power is on good friday listen i'm just gonna tell y'all we are getting our feet washed by the pastors i'm just saying oh y'all ain't excited okay that's fine i'll move on i'll move on all right so on may 4th may 6th where my women at we are having our women's retreat it is $50 for your first deposit, and then you can make installments each month for that as well. And like I said, for whatever reason, my phone won't let me scroll. Oh, there we go. All right. So our prayer wall, if you don't feel comfortable coming to people and asking them for prayer, we have a prayer wall right back in the back. You just write your prayers down, stick them on the wall, and our prayer team will pray for them um, every week. If you would like to be a part of our Easter way, we would be having a meeting right after service today. Just come find uh, me or come meet me right back there by the prayer wall. We have all areas that you can serve in at this ministry. If you would like to take the next step and say, hey, I'm ready to put my um, hands to the plow or my feet to the plow, then please come meet us right back there by the welcome booth and we will get you a next step card. We have very uh, a lot of events going on here at the Link Church, as you can see. And so if you would like to keep up on all the events that we have, we have an app that's called a Text in Church app. And all you do is give your phone number, and we'll add you to the Text in Church. And every time something is going on, you'll get a quick text message. Guys, we love you. We thank you. We, um, we praise God that you came into this place today. As you see, we are a um, prayer and praise in church, um, a radical um, at all times. And so we get a little crazy, but we are crazy for God. Amen. And so if you would give it up for, our, oh, we got a video. Oh, see, look, they didn't even tell me, and I'm over the order. Praise God. Watch this video. perfect picture, the space and time splitter, the Augustan calendar plumb line. We all know what common error means. Please. The I'm telling you, this is epic. Wait for it. I'm finna fix it. The promised neck crusher with a bruised heel. It's so real. The image the law was picturing and prophets trying to concoct words about breathing word. Get it? Breathing word, word that breathed the breath of life who invented both. Whoa. Word. The start and stop or stay stunting like my daddy. Homie, the great I am's great I told you. The system flipper over. The overture you missed. The back is the front. Homie, left side up. The greater and higher jihad. Greater revolution. Earthly kingdoms are pitiful. The second in rank, equal in essence. Laughing at demigods, because <laughs> demo fraud. But for the joy set before him, the this kingdom works backwards. The ruler serves servant king, suffering servant, sit with that one. The endless and eternal, I owe you one big bro. The savior, irrespective of rank, race, and religion. The incomparable good news, the I'm all you got, partner. The good luck without me, bruh, bruh, but it's all good. Your smell don't bother me. I love you. The still sitting at right hand, giggling at earth kings. Your entire empire is a card castle. No hassle. The sound that is person and came in camp with underlings. Whose light and life was the light and life of all human beings. The yeah, I'm that guy. The I'm that dude. The I'm period. The second person, fully God, fully king. Him, the owner of death keys. The I'll take that and raise you one. The raised one, the living and breathing liberty bell that'll never crack. The warning, the dawn of the last morning, the I'ma be right back, the I'll deal with you later, the I am not at all shook in any way by Satan. Does a painting scare a painter or does he just destroy the canvas? The until then, I'ma post right here waiting for these suckers to prop my feet on. And when Pop say I'm on my way, scooping my dime up, let's roll, girl. The one and three and one, all sufficient son of Elohim, that's Jesus, Yahshua, our prophet, priest, and king, our prophet, priest, and king. Amen. Hallelujah. 
now, y'all do realize that we're here to worship Jesus, right? And what a privilege we have to be able to just come together corporately and to together, right, in one accord, uh, raise up a hallelujah and uh, raise up a praise. See, there, there's just something that, 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 that happens when you try to do things by yourself that you are so limited. But the word says that together we could conquer more than what we can conquer when we're all by ourselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so it's so important for us to congregate and to come together. Why? Because there's power in numbers. Right? There's power in numbers. And so we work together to accomplish what God desires for us. When you read through scripture, God speaks to man alone, but he works to, through them in numbers. He spoke to Moses by himself, but, but he was uh, accomplished what God desired for him through an entire nation. When you look at Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he spoke to him alone, but together with the disciples and apostles, he accomplished what he came to this earth to accomplish. God will speak to you alone. Don't be afraid of being alone, but he will work through you in numbers. And when we corporately praise and worship, it is is a sound to heaven that is familiar to what it's going to look like when this all this whole thing is all said and done. There will come a time where the trumpet will blast and Jesus came on the back of a donkey, but he will return on the back of a white horse and call up his church and we will be shouting hallelujah for the rest of eternity. Listen, I know that I may not possess a, a six pack now with somewhere in there, but I know that my new body up in heaven is all that and a bag of chips and there's no snack crackle and pop up in heaven are you hear what I'm saying and so this is just a little bit of a taste of that if you're not liking it now you might not like what eternity is going to look like for us but there is another place and so if you don't like this maybe I can offer you that and everybody went Ew. we are talking about authority, faith, and furious all month long. And I'm so excited uh, that, that it's been something that it has impacted me first. I always tell people that when I prepare these messages, it ministers to me before it ministers to y'all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so uh, it has really began to change the way that I speak a little bit. I'm cautious as to how I speak and the things that come out of my mouth. I realize that when I pray to God, I want God to do something. But there are some times that we loosely speak words and God hears those too. And so we got to be cautious how we speak and how we act because either way we are manifesting something into the atmosphere. And if we believe that God will do what we say he will do, you got to be cautious when you unintentionally speak words that God hears and the enemy can grab a hold on to. So today, can I give you this phrase before we even get started? How you treat what's in your hand will determine if I can release what's in my hand, says God. See, how we manage authority will determine if God can release what's in his hand for you. And oftentimes we, we don't realize that our lack of authority keeps stuff from you. Now, I started writing words like there's a blessing locked up and you can access a blessing. But I'm so tired of us always looking for blessings from God. Some of y'all just want your next level. Some of y'all just want your next season. Some of y'all want to just gain access to what God spoke over your life. I don't want to call those blessings. I want to call them for what they are. Some of you, God has spoken a word over in what you will do in ministry. But you know who is stopping you from doing that? You, Y-O-U, if I was sitting on that side, I would be saying me. And so as we begin to understand the responsibility that we have to function in a certain way and how you function will determine what God releases out of his hand for your life. Some of us are thinking like, I need a key on how to better my marriage. I'll give you a key, act right. I don't know why everywhere I go I have a problem with somebody. It ain't them, it's you. It, there's no way that you could go everywhere you go, you got a problem. 
Now, now I, I understand that there, I, this is not an absolute statement. There are times where it is everybody else and, and the devil is just hot on your tail. But, but there is a power that God up in heaven is saying, it is at your disposal. What are you going to do with it? And sometimes we don't use it in the way and the manner that God uh, makes it available to us. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. This is Paul speaking to the church of Ephesus. And it says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. What is this telling us? Paul is saying, yo, y'all don't really understand the power that God is making available for the people who believe in him. I'm praying and I'm fasting and I'm hoping that you can understand the power that is made available to you because if you understood it, then you would flow and function in a way that you are clear and you operate knowing that Papa is going to do what you say. He's going to show up when you when you when you expect them to and when you don't expect them to there's a power that that gives you a boldness and and it doesn't mess with your self-esteem it allows a, a reinforcement to go behind you because you stepped out believing that where you are there he is he, there was a prayer god i pray can can they just believe and understand the incredible greatness and the power that is made available to them. Think about your day to day. Think about a Monday morning. Are you believing in God's power on a Monday morning? When your kids are sick, are you believing in God's power in that morning? Or they, it goes to I hope and I wish. And all of your prayers are defeated prayers rather than prayers believing that God's report is greater than any doctor's report. That was a good place to shout amen. Do I need to start giving you a hint and stomping on the stage to give you a good indication when an amen is suitable? I like it when y'all talk back to me. It makes me preach better. There is a power that Paul is saying we are not exhausting the availability that God is making for us. There's an availability that the heaven is saying, it's, uh, here you are, you can use it whenever you want to, and we're leaving it at the table. We're not using it, but we're complaining about the things that we want to do, that we would like to do, the things that are not being made available to us because everyone is against us, and we throw pity parties, and some of us like to sit in front of a mirror and cry just because you want to see how you look when you got tears falling down. Y'all take selfies like, like somebody else took the picture. It was you. You were crying. You paused your crying so you could take a selfie and act like somebody else took it. Y'all even look surprised like. <laughs> Verse 20, it says, God, to believe in God's power that's for us. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly places. I said this a moment ago. We are provokers of God's power. I went to preach in Costa Rica, and I was like, I didn't even want to come back. Don't folks get to that altar. They got sticks, and they're banging them at each other. They stomping. They got flags all over the place. Them folks are like, Holy Spirit, I dare you to come into this room and do something about it. They didn't just worship up to, like, the fourth row. They worshiped all the way to the back of the room. Are you hearing? In fact, in fact, the first four rows praised, and the back of the room came to the front of the altar. was like, get out of my way. I just got here late. And so, and so they provoked, they provoked the Holy Spirit to do something. And the worship there, it was r ridiculous. It was insane. And you have young people prophesying over older people, just the way that it worked. And I, I realized that we are provokers of God. All through scripture it says, if we, then he. If we, then he. If you don't move, then he don't move. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, and seek my faith, then, then, then I 
will come and heal their land. But what do we do? God, come and heal my land, and then I, I will seek your face. And God is saying, uh-uh, not, that's not how this works. This is not the principle of heaven. That's not how I designed it. When I spoke it into existence, you weren't there, and you can't change it. This is the way that it flows. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believes... Then you will have everlasting life. See, I learned this week that God encases things with a shell. And for us to have access to it, we have to break the shell. Every harvest is a result of a broken shell. Y'all need some more content, don't y'all? So I learned that you could put this image, that, that video up for me. Anybody have a green thumb in the house? All right. I, I, I plant. I'm, I'm not going to say I have a green thumb. But I learned something in this week. And it's the term imbibition. Anybody else here ever hear that term? All right. It makes me feel really smart saying it. Imbibition is a process that when you plant a seed and in the right environment, when water hits the seed, it swells. And growth does not begin to happen until the, the shell is broken of the seed. Just like you see in the image, it breaks through the shell. When a baby is in a womb, before it could come and experience the joys of this world, it has to break a shell. And I realize that most of us want to look like the plant that grew first without cracking the shell. See, you want God to bring whatever it is without you swelling up and without you growing. You want God to do it first, and then, and then you want to you wanna grow. But can I let you in on a little secret? If you ain't growing, you ain't going to look like the pretty little thing that God is desiring for you to look like on the other side of that thing. See, everyone wants the blade to crest the soil. Everybody can't wait for the fruit to just be hanging so that you can harvest it. I grow jalapenos and cilantro and, and tomatoes, and I have a peach tree in my backyard, and I have all of this stuff, and I, I'm watching it there, and I talk to my plants. Anybody else talk to their plant? And I pray in tongues over my, I be like, I, I pray health over you right now in the name of Jesus, and any devil insect that will come and try to eat your leaves, I rebuke them right now in the name of Jesus. I send them to the feet of Jesus. You will grow, pretty ladies. You will grow. Y'all think I'm playing. Y'all can ask my wife. Y'all can ask my wife. And I'm watering and I'm like, may this divine water baptize you in the spirit. Hey. <laughs> I'm not lying. Y'all think I'm playing. And they grow. And then I come in with this big old bucket of stuff to my wife. My wife is like, this is incredible. Some of y'all that have been following me on social media can see that I have been enjoying the fruit of my speaking in tongues over my plants. But I realize that I cannot wait until there's fruit bearing on them. And every day I'm looking to see if they grew. And every day I'm looking to see if something came up out of that, out of the ground. But I learned something that before it grows, it's got to grow. And you got to grow in the hidden place. See, some of us want to grow in a visible place, but you begin to grow first in the place where you have not been seen yet. And all of us want the platform and want, uh, bring me the big bucks and allow the world to see. But if you have not grown, you will never, you will never crest the surface of that soil. You will ask for a long time and beg for a long time and, and show up. And, and the reality is, is that if you're not maturing underground first, you will never mature or above ground. See, there's been times last year that uh, there was a storm that, that 
knocked down a bunch of branches on my peach tree and it took it down to the stub and it grew some. And last year, my peach tree didn't produce any peaches. It just produced a bunch of leaves. And it confused me for a little bit. And I was like, ooh, look at Jesus. I spoke this thing into health. Hallelujah. It was just leaves. It reminded me of the story of the olive tree that didn't have any olives. And Jesus cursed it. See, some of us, we, we're, we may be impressed by a bunch of leaves, but there ain't no fruit. If there is not health, then it will not produce what it was intended to produce. There are shells that have things that God has designed for us all locked Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 says this, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Again, God covers things. What are the things in your life that you have been desiring but you haven't cracked the shell of? What are the things that God has spoken of your life but you haven't taken a moment to crack the shell, all you've been asking God is to go ahead and make it happen for you. And any time that we do not move within the process of something, we ruin it. Ever take a cake out of the oven too soon? And it just looks all runny and nasty and ugly. Why? Because you just, can you hurry up? Or maybe if we put it at 450 degrees, it might do something. <laughs> right? And, and, and we try to rush the process, but, but we can't rush the process. You got to take your time and crack in the shell. You got to operate and flow in the timing of God. And his timing may not be your time, but his time is perfect. And your plans may not work out as planned, but as long as you are in the master's plan, you are in a good place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so let's look at, it, at an example. Let's look at an example. Time is flying today, y'all. Listen, Luke chapter 5, verse 3 through 5, it says, Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little bit from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the nets. This may sound like a scenario or a season of some of you in this place. That God is asking and demanding of you to go back to a place of people, a thing that you worked for a long time and there was no success. But God is telling you to go back. There are some things that, and you don't understand it and you're even telling God, God, I worked really hard. I've, I've done everything that I could there. There is nothing left and I have exhausted myself. I've tried everything and if it didn't work out, it's not because of me. It's because of them. They had all to do with why it failed. I was available and God says, well, I want you to go back. Their obedience would determine their harvest and their decision would determine their access. See, the story contains different levels of obedience. Level one is the obedience to follow the voice of Jesus. And the problem with the current time that we're in is that we can't differentiate be between the voice of Jesus and the voice of the world. Because the voice of the world seems really attractive and it, and it, it, it meets the desire, desires of our flesh. But, but we have to get to a place that, that we hear and understand the voice of God and that we are able to follow his voice at the appointed time, which is point number two, uh, the obedience in following the timing of God. Don't get ahead of God. You got to be right in step with the voice of God. Don't lose sight. And it doesn't matter what's going on in the lives of other people. See, we've gotten to a place where it's a vibe. It's a new thing in this season. And God is not looking about what you feel on the inside. It's being able to discern the voice of God. The heavens don't care how you feel. It's about being able to operate and function in a way that God is calling you to so that you can have access to what he has for you. See, we flow from a place of emotions way too long. Oh, they got a good vibe. Oh, we went to that church and there was a good vibe in that place. The problem with your emotion is that you could come into this place, somebody might give you a prophetic word, or you might like my message just enough, or you enjoyed the worship, and you leave here stirred but not moved. 
And the problem with being stirred, it means that you go back to the things that you were doing and it's okay. And all you did was, was receive a bandage in this place. But God is looking for people that are discerning and not calling it a vibe but calling it discernment and saying, I've heard from the heavens. I can't go there. I can't do that. I can't be around them. I can't step into that. And when you're able to clearly hear from the heavens, you don't flow from emotion. You flow from knowing that you know that you know and that's so much of a better place. Three is the obedience of to fight against your own desires. Do you realize that you fight against your desires all the time? Anybody in here fight against their desires all the time? All right, the rest of y'all are lying. <laughs> and you fought against your own desire to raise your hand. I ain't raising my hand. Listen, any preacher could turn, any good preacher could turn a message into anything, y'all. Like, we just preach about it. Harvest is an employee of God. God tells Harvest where to go. So in Luke chapter 5, verse 6, it says, and when they had done this, meaning that, that they went back out, right? When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. Let me ask you this question. When do you think the harvest showed up? Jesus said, I want you to go back out, and I want you to let down your nets again. And they did. And there were so many fish that the nets began to break, and they started calling other people. At what point do you think that the fish showed up back in the deep? The moment that Jesus said, I want you to go back out. See, here's the deal, and a lot of times we're like, well, what's mine is mine, and nobody can take it. Well, Jesus, what's mine is mine, and nobody can have it. I want to let you in on a little secret right now is that if Peter would not have gone out to the deep, he wouldn't have harvested that promise. Somebody else would have went. Those fish were out there. They didn't show up when he put the net in the water. There was not something that happened at the moment that they were arrived on site. The moment that Jesus began to tell them, listen, there's something for you right on the outside. I need for you to go back. Immediately things began to work themselves out. God begins to do things before he even tells you he's going to do them. And then give you the assignment to see if you're going to work it out. And some of us begin, well, God, I've been there before. Well, God, you don't know what they say. Well, God, everybody, yeah, 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 yeah. And God is saying, just go back out there and see what's going to happen. Just open your heart again. Just believe again. Just start the business again. Just write the book again. Just step into ministry again. Just preach again. Just get into a deeper relationship with me again. <laughs> Am I preaching to anybody in here? How you act when you feel like you have done it all will determine the release from heaven for your life. You know what the awesome part of this is? Luke chapter 5, verse 9 through 11. Now, these folks, they were fishing all night long. How long? I just want to make sure y'all with me. And they came back empty-handed. You know how many times they probably, Lord, can we just catch one? That's how I feel like when I go fishing at Lake Heflin. I have never caught anything. My daughter caught a little one one time. I'm like, my daughter's even fishing better than I am. I'm a catcher. I'm not a fisherman. Put me in a boat where all of the fish, where they, that little machine, doo, doo, right here, put it down. <laughs> so they were, they were praying. I'm sure there was disappointment. I'm sure that there was frustration. They go back out, and I'm sure that they were like, oh, my God, I cannot believe we have so much fish. I can't believe that we've caught so much. Just what we've been asking for and hoping for, I, I'm going to be able to now provide for my family, feed my family. These were fishermen. This was their business. And we get down to verse chapter 9, or excuse me, chapter 5, verse 9, says, For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when 
they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Did you catch that? They left all they thought they needed. They left the miracle to go with the miracle maker. That'll preach all day long. See, some of us are so caught up in asking God what we want, that when we get it, we leave God. Does your miracle have you, or do you have your miracle? When you get that provision, do you tell your dollar where to go, or does your dollar tell you where to go? Every relationship takes you from the path that you've been on, or does it help reinforce the journey that you've already been on? It's locked up in a seed. There's a seed that's holding what's next for you. And you can ask for the growth all you want to, but unless there's some growth, healing will never happen. Unless there's some growth, you will battle through all of the anxiety that you find yourself battling through. Unless there's some growth, you're going to continue to meet the people that you've been meeting. Unless there's growth, your family is going to continue to experience the same turmoil over and over. Are you going to crack the shell? Or is the shell going to crack you? Something has to change. And change is not change until it's changed. It can no longer be the same. And God has designed so much more for you. But your obedience will determine that harvest. All of us want to harvest. Anyone not want to harvest in this place? I'll take yours. I'll take everybody who doesn't want theirs. I'm like that, that kid that you stand in front of your father and he got the, the all of the money in his hand and he gives you 20 and you're like, you're standing there like, like that wasn't enough. And he gives you another another 20 and be like, where y'all going? And you still standing there with your hand open. That's how I am with my relationship with God. Like I want all of God. I don't want a portion. I don't want a sprinkle. I don't want just a, a, a dab. I want all of who God is. And in having all of who he is, it will make me all of who he's designed me to be. And I told my wife this just this past week. When I go to be with the Father up in heaven, I want to say I am completely empty. Like there's nothing left on the inside of me. I've left nothing on the table. No one uh, caused me to shy away. No self-esteem stopped me from doing what God has called me to. No mindset will block me. I will do exactly what God has called for me to do. And when that time comes before God, I can say, God, I've left it all. I didn't, I didn't hold anything back. I let loose. I've said what you said for me to say. I've gone where you set me to go. And I will be before the maker of the heavens and the earth and my only words that I want to hear is child grow because at this point all the things that have troubled us on this side of eternity mean nothing at that point break through the shell for your life you know why because your life depends on it your kids life depends on it and the generations to come you could be the one to break generational curses or be the one to start them for your family. Which one are you going to do? Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, we honor you. We thank you in this place. You are a sovereign God and you are a faithful God. God, as a spokesperson right now, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give us the strength to do all that you have called us to do, Father God. And we don't want to leave nothing on the table, God. That day that we're standing before your presence, my God, may we say we, we completely poured ourselves out for you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in this place and you've never received Jesus Lord as Lord and Savior of your life, but today you want to make that decision. Can you just lift your hand up right where you are? We'll pray for you. I see that hand up. Everyone else that would say, you know what, I see that hand in the back. Anyone else that would say, you know what, I see that hand right there. Thank you so much, sir. I see it. I see it right in the middle of your face. God, I just pray. Let's just pray together. Dear Jesus.
Jesus, today I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. I'm tired of trying everything else. Today I'm going to try Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Allow me to live as a good representative of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Welcome to the family. Maybe you've slipped away and, and you need to rededicate your life. And it's all good. You get to come on back home. The Bible says that, that Jesus left the 99 for the one. Sometimes we're that one. Right? And so if that's you and you're saying, you know what, I need to rededicate myself. I got distracted and a little bit tossed around. If that's you, just slip up your hand right where you are. Is there anyone that would just say, you know what, I want to rededicate my life? I see your hand right there now. Anybody else that would say, you know what, I see that hand. I see that hand right there. Yeah. Welcome home. Welcome home. God has been waiting for you. You are our guest of honor. And today all of this is for you. Lord, I pray over every individual that raised their hand and those that didn't raise their hand, but in their hearts they know that they are in a position to rededicate themselves. God, I pray that you would speak to them prophetically. God, that they would see you and hear you in visions and in dreams. And may they step into the best season of their ministry life without any limitation. In Jesus' name, and everyone says, amen. Really quick, guys, before we dismiss today, we, there's a few things that we're going to do. We're going to do a child dedication, and we're going to do baptism. We do baptism here a little bit different. If you bring them, you dunk them, right? A lot of times folks just want the pastor to do everything. Like, why? That, that's, I can only do but so much, right? But you brought them. You fished them. They're, those are your fish. And so you get the awesome opportunity to be a part of the journey of discipling them and baptizing them. And so we have a gentleman that will get baptized, and we have a, a, a baby that's going to get uh, dedicated. We could get, we could do the child dedication first while they get the baptism in place. And so, who, if I could have my wife join me, how's it going? Are the children ready right now? Come on, you gotta give it up for my. She is such an introvert. She's hating every minute right now. Amen. Are they, are they ready for the child dedication? Okay. Maybe is the baptism ready first? Is anybody ready? Anybody want it? Anybody ready that want to get baptized? <laughs> you better <bet> baptized. <laughs> we'll dunk you. Yeah, we got one right here. Come on now. Okay, oh, you got on. the babies coming. Okay. We have uh, we bake some shirts that say so fresh and so clean. You gonna get baptized? Go get go to go over there by the tank. Come on, we'll get you some clothes. Somebody get her a shirt. You got clothes in the car? Jesus, come on, this was ordained. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, y'all got a microphone over there. All right, ma'am, why don't you share your name with us? Get 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 the microphone so sir. family. Baptism during at, here at the Lane Church is family time. I know some of y'all are like, what is going on? Why is everybody moving around? No, listen, it's family. This is a next step in their walk of faith and we, we're so grateful for it. And so, Haley, right? Haley. Kaylee. Kaylee. That's my yeah. daughter's name. I have a younger daughter named Kaylee. <laughs> Kaylee, tell us about your decision right now as to why you want to get baptized. Have you ever been baptized? Uh, yes. Right. The next month will make a year that I was baptized, but I've been through a journey like, no. <laughs> and a year ago, me and my son left a bad situation, and God saved us, and it was a miracle in my life. But I've slipped a little bit since then because I didn't really have guidance on this. I've been on this journey mostly by myself. Yeah. So I backslided, and I'm trying to get back on track. I haven't backslided that much, but it's enough that I love God so much. That it hurts me that I backslide. So I want to get rebaptized just to renew that. Yeah. There's no grave. Come on, y'all celebrate her. Yeah. Now, Pastor Bill, can you can you pick up some of that water and just like kind of just let it go up and, and let everybody see it? Listen, y'all, there's no power in that water. That's just water. But we're believing that through her, her obedience and this public confession. That she's going down in that water as the old her and up as the new her. Help her out. If, 
Somebody um, who's that with her, if she could stand on this side so that whatever on the other side is concerned, if you could cover her when she comes up out of that water, breathe, protect her. Yeah, it's cold. We're going to freeze them kidneys out. Kaylee, through your public confession of faith, today we baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Come on, you guys, celebrate her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Who else? Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, 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 glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's so good. Who's next? Who's next up on the on the, the, the tank? Who else is getting baptized over there? You got uh, the tank is over there? You want okay, come on up. Let's do this. I just do what they tell me to do around here. so cute. Look at that. Hey. Nice. Hey. You got to love church babies. Like, they love everybody. They hug everybody. That's that's how you know you got a good church kid. And so tell us your baby's name. It's not my baby's oh. name. They're my Lily and Melody. Lily and Melody. And so the way that we do child dedication here is that we anoint them and we, we give them back to God. And we thank God for allowing us to have a partnership with him in raising them. And so do you promise to raise your children in a godly home? And you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Yeah. And so this is like a marriage church. It takes a community to raise a child. And so I promise you this, that if I see your child doing something that they're not supposed to be doing, I am going to correct them. You know why? Because I want you to correct mine. And we've gotten to a time now where that's not something that is so frequent. It used to be like everybody get a, uh, a whooping on the way home. And then say, wait till your dad gets home. Be like, again? You walk limping all week. I want you to feel comfortable in helping me raise my children as I'm going to do all that I can to help you do the same. Can we commit as a church with this young lady up here and these children? Do you commit to that? Amen. And so, uh, where's where's some oil? Hold on a second. And so the anointing oil that we use, we believe in the Old Testament, it was used to consecrate and set things aside and so we're setting aside these children before the Lord and we're saying God use them for your will and keep them from the things of this world in the name of Jesus and so can you extend your hand this way would you do that God we pray for these precious babies my God and we pray an anointing over their life my God Lord we pray that anything any harm that the enemy would try to bring against them that it would that it would be pushed back right now in the name of Jesus any plan that the enemy had to try to distort and bring dysfunction, we expose it now. Devil, you have no authority over this family. You have no stronghold or foothold over them. We break any generational curse that would try to keep them from being women of God that will spread the gospel. And God, we pray for the mama, God. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will bring healing of mind. And as she does all that she can to raise these children, Father, that she would lack nothing. We pray the attribute of Jehovah Jireh over her life, my God. Lord, that every need would be met. God, we pray that you would be a strong tower and a strong banner over her life, my God, that she would not be afraid to fight against the fiery darts of the wicked one, but that she would stand with authority in her home, knowing that what she speaks, my God, that you would, that you would make happen. Lord, and we just thank you, God, as we dedicate these children unto you. God, receive them and set them apart for your work on today. In the name of Jesus, and everyone says, Amen. And so, woo! 
So we have a little gift for them, their little uh, first bedtime Bible story. And then we have these wonderful little uh, certificates. And, uh, and so, yay. All right. And so go ahead and we'll hold these for you. And then uh, you can make your way to the baptism tank. If she wants to hold on to it, she can. All right, awesome. And so you guys go ahead. Isn't this amazing? We get to celebrate stuff like this. This is like a life change for them. They're making a decision to say, you know what? I, I just want to head in that in a new direction. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Tell us the young lady's name. Christina. Christina. Christina, you look like you're so bold and you're going to share with us your decision as to why you make the decision. <laughs> Amen. Just go ahead and jump into the tank, Christina. Well, yeah, be careful. Don't jump. Don't die. Baptize yourself. Christina, do you love Jesus? And have you accepted him as Lord and Savior of your life? And you're ready to go down in the old and up in the new. You ready? Let's do it. Sit on your bottom if you could. Amen. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to lay her down and just dunk her. <laughs> Christina, through your public confession of faith today, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Get her down. Yeah. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Pastor Bill looked like a forklift. Like. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Who is this young man? Balin. Balin. You love Jesus? And you've accepted him in your heart? And you're ready to be a man of God? And to help leading the family? I'm going to hold you to it. Go ahead, sir. All right, sir. Through your public confession of faith today, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. All right, sir, come on up. Well, is there? Oh, mama's got to come up here. All right, sir. First off, can I? Can you just show off your muscles to the crowd? He's like, uh-uh. <laughs> All right, sir. Amen. Destin, Destin, do you love Jesus? Yeah? <laughs> you ready to do this thing? All right, sir. Go ahead and sit on your bottom. <laughs> Today, through your public confession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's so good. Come on, who's hopping in the tank next? All right, here you go. Tell everybody your name one more time. Is there a microphone still over there? Tell us your decision on today and bringing your whole family through. That Jessica, my name is Jessica. And my decision to get baptized today is because I want to raise my kids in the will of God. I want my house to be blessed. I want to be used by God. I want to do anything and everything I can do to bring and win souls to heaven with me and my children. Amen. Hallelujah. Show them kids how it's done, man. Yeah. Jessica, today, through your public confession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. want to let y'all know, if y'all a guest, it's like this every week, y'all. Tell us your name. Candace. Candace. Bless you, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you for being a help to her. 
no problem. Tell us your decision today. My decision today is because um, I want to live my life for Christ and do things the right thing, live for the Lord. No for anybody else. Nobody can stop me from doing anything. The Lord is who can stop me from anything. Yeah, amen. amen. So you love Jesus? I do. And you've accepted him into your heart as Lord and Savior? Absolutely. Ready to go down in the old and up in the new? Absolutely. That's enough for me. Get in the tank. want to remove your glasses, those will be anointed by the time you come out of the water. <laughs> All right, ma'am, through your public confession of faith, today we baptize you in the name of the, th the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so my brother, as a result of his decision on today, he has that entire cheering corner back over there. That whole back corner over there. And so tell everybody your name. Oh, I'm Gerald Riggins. Um, I've been coming here for six, seven months. A lot of you guys don't know me. I sit in the back. So when the service is over, I'm the first one to go shake past the hand and go get in my car. But... Uh, I enjoy this church. It reminds me of a Pentecostal church back home in Georgia. So I'm joining the church and getting baptized today. So thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, Sharon Corner, if y'all need to move, get up, go take pictures, help in this process. You guys have been a part of his journey. And so we want you to be a part of his new decision on today or his decision on today to get baptized. And so y'all love on him and cheer on him and celebrate on him whenever he makes his decision. Yeah. He said it's cold. <laughs> All right, here we go. Sir, through your public confession of faith on today, we baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Yay! Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Anybody else want to go jump in and get baptized? We have more towels. Hallelujah. Oh, dedicated. Okay. Where is he at? He's here? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do the decree and declare as you're getting your child. And then those that want to stick around and watch it happen, you have more. Please do. If you got to go, understandable. Uh, but we'll do the decree and declare, and then we'll dedicate the child when they get the child up. Amen? You guys Amen. welcome Tish back up. Praise God. Listen, we make that water cold so that they won't sin no more. Because they, they, <laughs> they don't want to get back in that water. <laughs> oh, man. Praise God. Is it God good? Amen. <laughs> All right, guys, at the end of every service, we do our decree and declare. Pastor Jay uh, came up with this. And so um, I just say, take these words in. Don't just speak them. Like he said, what we speak comes to existence. Amen. So receive these words and just say them strong. Um, all right. I declare that I am a child of God and that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I declare the Spirit of God to manifest in my life daily and in the lives of my loved ones. I declare lost souls will be found and saved with the help of God's people. I decree and declare I no longer live in fear, but I walk by might in Jesus' name. I cast out all substance abuse and dependencies. I depend on Christ alone. Anxiety, fear, stress, panic attacks, and pain are completely out of my life. I am healed of my past and all sicknesses. I come against the enemy's tactics. God has a plan and a purpose for my life. I decree and declare that I am blessed. My family shall be blessed. My finances are blessed. My bills are paid and I am current. All curses formed against me are broken. I am living in victory daily. I am a living testament, and through me, many shall come to Christ. 
I decree and declare my life back to God. I am a child of a living God. My plan and my purpose are revealed to me this day in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. Said I woke up to the summer shining through, calling on my friends, asking what's the move. Feeling a little different, I'm on something new. Today, today.